Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father, with my awesome co-host, Gina. we got an awesome interview for you guys and gals today, and it's an honor and privilege to have on the line with me right now, Mr. Frankie Palmieri. He is the vocalist of Emuri. They have a new album, Look At Yourself, out now. And folks, I'm going to tell you right now, this is uh, one hell of an album from these guys, and it's good to see them back out because they have some great, great music. Frankie, my man, how's it going? Uh, I can't complain, man. I got the day off. I'm just relaxing. So, I, uh, you know, everything's, everything's looking uh, clear skies today. What's impressed you the most about making the new album look at yourself? What's caught your eye about it, if any, man? I, I finished the record, like, in August. So, you know, I, I've been on it. I've been sitting on it for a long time. Uh, I mean, I'm just really proud of all the work everyone did. You know, we're excited to put it out, pretty much. I'm definitely a fan of it. I actually got my tickets for the St. Louis show, so I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> awesome, um, awesome. See you there. As far as the new lineup goes and when it all came together, what was it like playing with everybody for the first time? It was surreal. You know, obviously everyone uh, in the band is proficient at what they do, so it just kind of like fell together like so organically, and you know, everyone's so talented. It just, I just kind of lucked out, you know? I always have a, I always wonder about this with the metal bands, like, how do you maintain your vocals after all that abuse? Does that come naturally um, for you? <laughs> or do you have to like um, some I think the short answer the short answer is that you don't, but you try your best. <laughs> so uh, you know, I pamper myself, I get plenty of rest, I make sure to uh, eat the right food, drink the right drinks. It's like a whole it's a whole thing. It's it's like it goes beyond just, you know, the thirty to forty minutes I stay on stage, it's like my entire day revolves around it. So yeah, it's like a whole thing. Any songs off the Look At Yourself album that stand out more to you than any off of it, possibly? I don't know, man. I mean, I've been asked this question a few times, and I don't, I don't really, I don't pick a favorite song because I, I, they all, I value all of them equally. I think they're all great. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'll, I'll let the fans decide, you know, what their favorite tracks are. You know. When did you sort of discover metal, and did you know at that point that you would have a future in it? Well. I grew up in a house filled with music, so it was just like, you know, my parents were into like country and like old like doo-wop and things like that. And uh, my brother was into like Metallica and Faith No More and Nirvana and all these things. And my sister was to like Paul Abdul and New Kids on the Block. <laughs> and so I had always, I had a very eclectic taste in my house, you know, to choose from. And I was exposed to so many things. So all genres kind of all blended together to me and never... I never excluded one from the other. Um, I, I always shifted towards aggressive music because I just enjoyed that vibe more as a kid. But um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say there was any kind of discovery or like, oh, wow, I discovered metal music. I just, I was kind of like born into this like musical concoction in my house. So I, uh, I got put on really early as to, you know, as to what's what, you know. Since adding the new members to Emory, what have they brought to the table to this band? Frankie, that may have been missing, man. I mean, I mean, shit, where do I even start? I mean, you know, everyone is a virtuoso, what they do. So just having that kind of talent already on board opens the gates for so many different things. You know, I mean, obviously working with Josh has been um, a blessing in so many different ways. He's a genius in his own right and just good at everything he touches. So it was just um, a great meeting of the mind, man. You know, I'm just really stoked to have everyone on board. I'm kind of curious, uh, since you were talking about, you know, like growing up, you had a bunch of different genres, which I'm kind of a music junkie and I feel the same way. Like, I like a little bit of everything, but kind of my go-to is metal. Is there anything in your playlist that your fans might be surprised to find? <laughs> like, um, you, got, you got any Britney in there that you're jamming out to oh, on the road? No. <laughs> well, um, there's a there's a couple of Britney Spears songs I don't mind, but... Uh, I'm I'm that kind of person where like I don't care like what like I don't care about genres or titles or I don't right. care I just don't care I just I listen to whatever I like and so yeah whatever's catching my mood at the time I listen to sometimes I sometimes I just listen to like Alice DJ on repeat or some shit like that or I don't know if I just if I if I went over your head Alice DJ was a very uh, was a very famous like pop star like, in like the 90s or whatever so uh, anyway but uh, yeah I listen to everything man I don't know I, I wouldn't know what to tell you I, I have no shame in anything I enjoy I don't really get a shit people think so <laughs> yeah I don't I don't mind either like I love metal but then I'm like oh dude I love this sync song and my friends will be like yeah 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 and, and, and they're yeah and I, I'm with you I'm, I'm the same exact way you know I, I really 
I really enjoy everything um, in, in some capacity. I can, I can appreciate almost anything. The only music I, I genuinely, I shift away from that I don't find myself enjoying, unfortunately, is like pop or red country. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you understand the terms I mean, I'm saying, yes. like songs that like just, I just don't really, they don't really hit me in any certain way. So yeah, I don't, it doesn't mean that it's bad. I'm not saying that, that that genre of pop country is awful. I just mean that like it just does nothing for me. So I I, I usually um, will tune out. But I do like real country, like Hang 3 and like even Ray Charles when he was doing country music. I like that. And I was yeah. Johnny Cash sure. and he's the best ever. So Shit, yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, you know, I'm open minded. What helps you keep your mind fresh and open to lyrics, Frankie? I mean, I know everything under the sun has been done, but is there anything that helps you remotely stay open minded, man, with all this? Honestly, every every Muir album in some capacity is like a 16-month diary of my life. You know what I'm saying? So you're pretty much getting like what I've been going through up until the release of the record, you know, or the creation of the record, I should say. So it always stays fresh in that sense that I'm always updating the Muir lyrics by telling you exactly what I've been going through the past, you know, year and a half or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I guess that's the best explanation I have as to what keeps it fresh. I mean, really, I, it's funny because, you know, I, I don't consider myself a wordsmith, a poet or anything. I just, I just write what I feel is necessity as a necessity for me to, to, to get out. You know, I use music as a catharsis. So if you were to tell me to write a song about Abraham Lincoln, I'm sure it'd be very different, but when I'm writing about my life, it tends to be, um, you know, particularly in, in that vein. So, I mean, your lyrics are, are freaking phenomenal and I'm not just saying it cause you're on here, but I mean, it, it touches me because it's shit I've been through, you know I mean? It, it reaches out to folks like, like us or to all of us. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's, that's very, uh, that's very flattering. Yeah. And you know, flag of the beast, God, dog, man. Jeez. Oh, dude, speaking of repeat songs, that's my repeat song right now. <laughs> fucking A. Fucking A. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that song is just like, if that don't kick your ass or anybody can't get into that, then you have solely missed on what music's about. <laughs> yeah, I I, uh, I I share your sentiments completely. Do you think that there are any misconceptions about Amir? Mm, uh, wh- like what? Give me one. Well, no, I'm asking, like, do you ever, like, hear anybody say something and you're like, man, that's totally not us? Like, is there anything that you are just like, man, that's a total misconception? That's not what we're about. I mostly don't pay attention to anything anyone says about us because most of the time it most of the time it is complete nonsense. Sure. Uh, uh, what, we, what we truly are are just four people that play music. That's really what we are. At the, at the end of the day, that's what Amir is. So anything, any, any, any other fucking, like, you know, little taglines when people want to put on us that we're this kind of band or these kind of people, they don't, they don't know anything and that's okay. I don't care. They don't need to know, but, but I will say, uh, in confidence and you can put me on record that what a mirror is at the center is just people who really genuinely enjoy playing music. And we try to deliver a great show and put out music that we enjoy. And if people enjoy it with us, that's just a bonus. You know, we, we, we're not, we're not making records in the hopes that we'll make a million dollars. We just, making the records we like you know what i'm saying that's really comes down to what do you hope the fans take away from this album frankie once they start to listen to it and digest it man what do you hope they get from it i mean honestly man i just think music is the answer i think music is the escape i think that's that's the that's the best outlet for anything and anyone breathing in the world so if people get something out of the record i hope it's enjoyment i hope that it's somehow it brightens their day in some way or lets them you know work out a piece of themselves they couldn't otherwise, you know, because that's what music does for me. You know, music has always been there in my darkest times and in my brightest times, both, you know. So I want this record to be the same thing. I want people to hear the record and listen to it when they're feeling, you know, at their best and if they're feeling the worst, then they have a place to be, you know, and uh, that to me is what music is all about, honestly. Yeah, I think it's amazing that music is so subjective and I have a hard time saying, like, that is bad music, but it's really just something that I'm personally not into. And I think it's yeah, great yeah. that the, when people go out and like, like I, I'm a music junkie, but I have zero music talent. <laughs> so it's great that people like you are out there giving us something to connect to and, and being able to get through hard times and, and good times, you know, you're there through the bad times, you're there through the party times. And like, like these bands, just in generally speaking, don't really know that you're going through all this stuff with, with your listeners. And I think that's awesome that, you know, people go out there and they don't quit and they keep going just to help people out, you know, like us. 
Yeah, I mean, I, it really, it's 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 not so premeditated. You know, I don't I don't make the records with this, with like this, you know, attitude that okay, I'm going to put this out and a a person and b person are going to feel this way about it. I just go, this sure. is what I enjoy. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm going to put out there. Whoever gravitate towards it, if they love it, then that's a plus. That's great, you know. And if people walk away from it, that's their loss. That's how I feel about it. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's cool. I, I appreciate definitely um, that you dig it. But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm definitely a music junkie as well. You know, I listen to fucking everything. Yeah. What can fans expect at a show from the Mighty Emiri when they come out to see you guys? And Gina's going to get to see you next week. But what can they expect, dude? That's a good question. I don't even know what to expect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll see, man. We'll see how the night goes. I mean, every single uh, every single show is, is, you know, is definitely a good time for us. We love to perform. The crowd gives us... 110 percent of their energy and um that's what makes the show i mean honestly it's regardless of how proficient we'll play or how our tight we'll play or how we'll sound it comes down to the vibe in the room so as long as the vibe is right then it's going to be a good time well i'll be there so i'm <laughs> and i have a lot of people that are coming with me so i hope we uh we deliver <laughs> my- yeah yeah you'll see me, you'll definitely see me there that's awesome. <laughs> frankie yeah, I-, I hope you're there <laughs> <laughs> I know this is a double-edged sword kind of question, but do you like sure. the digital era that we're in right now with recording albums and getting music out there quicker? Do you like this, man, and social media with it now? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely see... Uh, I, well, well, let me ask you, well, what's double-edged about it to you? That's a better question. Well, I know some artists, they don't like people stealing their music now, you know, going downloading it right. and stuff. I mean, that part of it, but... You know, there's pros and cons about it, but what's it with you? <laughs> That's what I'm I, trying to say. I think, well, I think, I think it all. The, sorry. No, I was just gonna say, like, to add to that, like for me, I think I remember when I was younger, going to the store and getting a CD and like locking myself in my room and looking at the artwork and the booklet and kind of experiencing the CD from front to back. And I don't know if kids these days are, you know, the new generation get to experience that. So I think that's a little bit different these days too. I think that they do experience that. I think that there is a market of people, or demographic of people, I should say, who want a tangible record. They want to take something that they truly love and invest in it and be like, this is mine, I own this, I, you know, and, and, and in its truest form. And then there's some people who aren't like that, who go, I don't really care about owning the record physically, as long as I fix on my phone or fix on my iPod or whatever, then I'm happy. And that's cool too. I don't give a shit. It doesn't make a difference to me. To me, it's a music. It, 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 whether or not we get, uh, you know, a million fucking downloads or a million fucking album sales, I just want a million people to be stoked. That's, that's really all I care about. It, it doesn't, because it, it, if you, you could fucking, you know, you could literally, you, you could make a record that, you know, like everyone fucking, like everyone buys it, but it's shit and it's worthless, but <laughs> it's like, you know, if you brought something dope and everyone gets it for free, you're just as excited. So I don't know. I don't, I don't really, I don't really think of it. It all depends on your focus, man. It, to me, I focus on the positive. If, if 10,000 people tell me, Hey man, you know, I, I don't make a lot of money. I'm a student, whatever. I had to have your music. I downloaded it. I'm gonna go cool. I'm glad you have it. I'm glad you're doing it. I'm glad it's making your life a little better. That's cooler to me than, the fucking two to five cents I make on an album sale. I don't give a shit. I want people to have the record and love it. I don't care how you get it. It's going to with you. Yeah. Everybody I've been talking to, I've told them like, dude, you got to get this new Muri CD <laughs> regardless of how, you know, digital or cop or uh, CD, just get it. So. Right. Right. I don't know. Like, I don't know if the whole CD booklet thing makes me old and shows my age. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, I, I, I relate I relate to you heavily. I mean, I'm sure, uh, you know, we all feel the same way. We all grew up, you know, in a time where, like, music wasn't as accessible, where you couldn't just hop onto your Spotify when the album drops. You had to, like, go to the store at midnight, be the first of, like, 100 people to buy a record. Right. I remember that. I lived that. And uh, it definitely is different. Times have changed. Things are more accessible. Everything is very fluid, thanks to the Internet. But, again, to me, it's all about your focus. If you're the kind of person... We were like, oh, we better fucking better go. This record better sell a million units, else we're failures. And you're right. Then that's it. You've already set yourself set yourself up for disaster. Yeah. But yeah. my attitude, my attitude is like, honestly, dude, I don't give a fuck. It's like, if if again, if if a, if a fucking hundred people come up to me right now and say, look, man, I didn't fucking buy the album. I got it for free. I got. I stole it. But goddamn, it's the best thing I ever heard in my whole life. I'll be <laughs> stoked. I'm not gonna sit there and sulk about 
where the record, how they got the album, that means something to me. As long as people are enjoying it, so that's right. uh, I think that's, that's my bottom line with that. That's that's a great. I think that's a great attitude to have about it. Just to want to share what you've made with everyone. What does Emuri bring to the table for music that's not out there right now, man? I mean, I don't know. I try not to comment too much on what other people are doing or whatever. I focus primarily on what we do and what I do personally. So what is the, what is, what is the music world lacking? Shit. I don't fucking know. I have no idea. Um, I really don't. I mean, I just, I like what I like and I, I, what, what people are missing out on is that's their prerogative. I mean, I'm again, I'm the kind of, I'm the kind of person that I, I don't give a shit about genres or titles or anything. I just like what I like. And I don't know if I share that same, uh, you know, mentality with everyone else, but, Again, that's that's how it is for me. So I couldn't answer your question completely. What I think it's lacking, I, I just know that I, I'm I'm creating music. I pre- is there any, hopefully other people think it as well. Is there any show or moment that stands out more to you than any that you re- that you can recall being part of a Muri, like being on stage and being like, holy shit, I can't believe I'm a part of this, or playing with some. You know, well, I. I- I think uh, I think every every experience I've had over the years has, has changed my view on being on stage and what it's all about. But uh, I would say one of the more special times was my return to the stage in April of 2016 when uh, I played my first show with the new lineup. That was a really special show. We played in uh, in Germany and it was uh, it was packed. It was a huge show. It was the first time we played together live, um, and so that that's really a special night for me. Um, I look back on previous shows, but there's been a lot of really crazy nights, you know. When you go on these these long tours, is there any um, like is there any way that you you prep for them? Is there like okay, we're gonna go on this these three month tour and long tour? Like I have to have this stuffed animal from home with me through the entire thing. <laughs> like is um, any, no, like, I, I travel. I travel. Or, like, no, I, uh, I travel very tight as far as like my necessities go. I pretty much tour out of a book bag. I don't have a suitcase even. I just, I try to carry as little on me as possible. So there's nothing that I, I go, okay, I have to, but there's certain things I, I like to have. Like, uh, I obviously bring like some kind of like, like, like a Game Boy or something like that with me. Cause I do these crazy drives sometimes and uh, I carry around music that I listen to and I like, and, uh, luckily the iPad put everything on there, you put books on there, you put music on there. So I got, I got tons of stuff to, to pass the time with, but, um, yeah, I mean, ritual shit. I don't really know. I don't think there's anybody like any rigorous ritual for me personally. <laughs> I think that, uh, it's all about how you feel. So I, I try to have a positive attitude from the moment I wake up until I go to sleep so that, you know, what it, cause to me, that really is what's going to make or break your entire day. You know, everything, you know, we, even if, even if I know I'm going to go on stage and okay, that's like, the fucking the stage sounds gonna suck. Tonight it might not be our best night, but whatever. I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna enjoy it, and that's that's how I do it, you know. What's it mean to you? And I'm sure you guys get this when you receive an email from a fan, or prior to the shows, or after the shows, they come and they tell you that hey, your music has pulled us through a tough time, or it's gave me inspiration to overcome obstacles, or it's just made me to relax the everyday bullshit that we go through. What's that mean to you, dude? I mean, shit, I'm always flattered and I'm always humbled. And most of the time, I'm just so beside myself with what to reply with. I just kind of put my hands up and go, no, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, really, what can I tell? I mean, I, and even in the moment, I, I find myself rambling on to people about how, look, I'm like, really, I wish there was a way for me to express to you um, how much that means to me. But it's really like all I can say is thank you and please come back again and see us. <laughs> right. it's, uh, it's a good feeling, you know? Uh, no, I just I just wanted to say that I think I'm a personal fan of the new CD. I think it's awesome. I like many songs on it. I'm excited about Tuesday's show. It's not my first time seeing you, so I'm I know that you know I'm gonna have a good time. And uh, just thanks for Thank spending you. some time with us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Frankie, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy this new album, however they want to do it. Buy some merchandise too. And if tour you, date, check and if you if you if you have a computer. Type in the word E M M U R E into it, and you will find a way. That's my that's my advice. Before I yeah. let you go, good sir, <laughs> will you care to do a promo for my show? Yeah, uh, what's, what's the station ID? Yo, what's up? It's Frank Palmer from Amur. You're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody, stick around. We got some awesome music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio from my co-host Gina. Thank you so much, Frankie, for being on the show, man. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot.